This week I've been driving the 2020 AMG A35. All wheel drive, seven speed dual clutch transmission, made it to a two liter turbocharged engine, makes 302 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. Makes some good little noises too. <laughs> Let's walk you around this thing, take it for a drive tonight and uh, see what this little baby AMG is all about. I will say I have really enjoyed driving this the last few days. We most recently had a BMW M235i, the front wheel drive based one that's kind of similar to the Mini Coopers. And I will say I vastly prefer this A35. It is just, it has more character. I think it looks better. And the interior, the quality, the feel of the overall vehicle is, uh, it feels like it's worth 50 grand and uh, it starts at 45 and this one that we that we're testing is 52. This competes with the Golf R, the, maybe the Audi S3 and uh, I think it does quite a good job at it. You get a decent amount of trunk space. You can easily fold the seats down back here. Beautiful red seat belts, Alcantara and the seats. Like a lot of the vehicles in this class, it is a little bit cramped in the back, but for myself at five foot 10, um, I'm pretty comfortable back here. You're probably not gonna be wanting to put six foot plus passengers in the back seat, but that's okay. And look at this interior. You guys, this is awesome. I'm very impressed. Nice red stitching, all the materials, especially this suede steering wheel, feel very nice. While we're here, let's pop the hood and look under the look into the engine bay. On the inside, we have Mercedes-Benz latest MBUX infotainment system. So very similar to a lot of the other Mercedes-Benz products we've been testing recently. You have these little touch things on the steering wheel that control the screen on the right. This one that controls the screen on the left. It's all very high resolution, very attractively laid out, and relatively easy to use. You do have a touchpad down here that works quite well. Um, I'm finding these steering wheel controls to be slightly less user friendly, but it gets you around and once you kind of get all your settings figured out, it's, uh, it's not bad. One thing you'll notice too is the interior lighting on this is wicked bright and looks really, really good, I think. You do have some uh, adjustability in that where you can go into the settings and uh, go and select your light. I'll just use it as a touch screen now. And you can go in change it to a few different colors. You have purple sky, red moon, fire red. Personally, I kind of like ocean blue. On the steering wheel, you have lots of controls for your drive modes. So you can switch between your individual, comfort, sport, sport plus. We'll start off in comfort today. You can change your damper settings, turn off and on, traction control. And of course, there's always redundant buttons for all of those things down here as well, which is kind of nice. You get some neat little storage down here for your phone, uh, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, all that good stuff, and uh, pretty much everything you would need in a vehicle in this class, except for maybe radar guided cruise control. But I will say this week, I haven't really missed it, and uh, it makes me feel like I'm in a little bit more of a driver's car. These seats are very comfortable, very nice, very plush. You even get this little extender and uh, crumb collector right here, which is very uh, high end. Good panoramic sunroof. As you may have learned from watching the straight pipes video, the sun visors don't extend. A little bit of a fail on Mercedes part there, but that's okay. We have a, uh, a red stripe on the steering wheel to show us the center line. Overall, a very attractive and pleasing interior. Before we get started on our drive tonight, I would like to thank our sponsor, Vincero Watches. You may have heard of this brand before. A lot of other automotive YouTubers are rocking these on their wrists. 
they have sent me the Apex, which is their racing-inspired watch. You have a tachymeter here where you can calculate speed, distance, time. You have a little bit of a stopwatch chrono feature, which has even a, a nice smooth secondhand sweep to it, which for a mecha quartz movement is quite nice. And if you guys haven't noticed, I'm a little bit of a watch geek myself, so I do appreciate a good timepiece, and I am excited to do a sponsorship with Vincero because they do make a very nice product. This has beautiful finishing. Feels like a pretty nice quality watch, has a good weight to it. For 200 bucks, uh, this is really hard to beat. The important thing about Vincero right now and this video is that this week they have a huge sale going on. This is their sixth anniversary. They're doing 30% off their entire website. That's pretty much unprecedented. And uh, if you are interested in a new timepiece or just want to kind of spruce up your watch game, this is kind of the time to do it. I'll include a link in the description and in the top comment of this video. Head on over to the website, check out some of their timepieces. They have some beautiful designs and really nice options for all sorts of different tastes. Thanks again for their sponsorship in this video. Let's get going with this drive. So we'll start off in comfort mode. Honestly, this is the mode that I've been driving the most in with this car. It has pretty linear throttle pedal tuning. The car is still engaging and fun to drive, especially with this dual clutch transmission, but also it doesn't make everything overly excited like it does in sport or sport plus mode. These small turbocharged four cylinders that are tuned to about 300 horsepower tend to have a, a peakiness to them that is a little bit uh, a little bit surprising on the street sometimes. <laughs> this dual clutch is quite good. Um, I actually kind of enjoy driving this car in individual mode, which I've set to be full manual shifting. You even get some pops in that mode, especially with the engine set to uh, its most aggressive setting. throw it into Sport Plus. We'll turn off our traction control. And see what it does off the line. <laughs> Race start gives us a little bit extra oomph between shifts, a little bit of a kick in the backside, which is always exciting. This thing does sound good. There is some neat trickery going on in the all-wheel drive system. A little bit of torque vectoring. That is adjustable between drive modes. Oh, the suspension is stiff. You can individually adjust things, which is very nice. So you can be in Sport Plus, have your suspension in Comfort mode. And I do appreciate that. So driving dynamics, I will say, just after driving this this week, it's fun. It's enjoyable. Um, I think this would make a great little daily driver. If this size of a vehicle fits in with your lifestyle, it's kind of the right size. It's easy to place, it's easy to park. Because it's a little bit smaller, it's lighter weight, it's more nimble, and uh, it feels it feels happy. It's kind of, uh, you know, it's, it's your sedan hot hatch, so to speak. I'm a little bit bummed that Mercedes-Benz isn't bringing the, the actual hatchback A35 AMG to the United States, but, the sedan does definitely look a little bit more upscale, I will say. And 
less uh, less boy racer, especially without all the aero bits. All right, we're just gonna leave this in drive. It really does bang shifts between gears. This has the adjustable suspension. It's quite stiff in the stiff modes, but it does improve handling quite a bit. And as is typical with many AMG Mercedes products, steering is fantastic, especially with this Alcantara steering wheel. Getting on the highway, just cruising in comfort mode. We'll throw, uh, we'll throw a cruise control on here. Pretty easy to operate. I mean, this is just old school, old fashioned cruise control. It's easy to change in five mile an hour increments with the double press. I will say that very often though, when I am changing the cruise control settings, I'm always pressing this touch pad here and uh, changing my gauge display, which is a little bit annoying. And that gets me into the infotainment. Um, it's, it's okay, it's a little bit, tedious to use and the steering wheel blocks a good portion of it so I can't really see anything on this side of the screen as you guys can probably see from the POV camera uh, which makes it a little bit inconvenient if this steering wheel were just a little bit smaller uh, or the screen were a little bit farther this way that wouldn't be an issue but as it stands I have to kind of move my head over a couple inches to see what's over on this side. My other complaint is that I wish Apple CarPlay were full screen. A lot of other car manufacturers, like Hyundai, for example, and Genesis, make their Apple CarPlay a full screen integration, and uh, this just feels like I'm losing some real estate here, and it's a little bit weird. Uh, again, there's just a lot of menus to go through. But you know what? That's a German car thing, and uh, maybe you're paying and you want that technology in your vehicle, and it's not as much of a distraction after a couple weeks. The sun is getting low and we can see a little bit more of this ambient lighting. Uh, you can see it's even present here in the air vents, which you just turn to turn on and off. Very sharp. Of course, with a car like this, it's going to really activate my OCD and I'm going to want them all straight all the time. Uh, but I mean, hey, $50,000 AMG and you get air vents that look like that. I think that's pretty cool. There are some little small areas here where you can see uh, some cheaper materials and, and, and buttons and switch gear compared to other Mercedes-Benz products like the, the seat adjustment here. However, ultimately, when you compare this to BMW, when you compare this to Audi, the materials, the fit, the finish, everything that's in here is actually quite a bit nicer, and I, I prefer it. So that's kind of a moot point, I think. And... Uh, I do really like the way this thing drives, feels, and uh, is to live with. Let's do one more entrance ramp in this and uh, have a little bit of fun around some corners. Definitely a little bit of understeer at the limit, but it all translates to an enjoyable driving experience. The steering weight, the feel of this wheel, the steering feel, the way the chassis kind of moves around you. This definitely feels like a front wheel drive biased platform, and it is. Um, you can put up to 50% power distribution to the rear axles, depending on what drive modes you're in. And uh, the sportier and with the less traction control on, the more that goes to the rear axle. And I think in the snow, you could probably kick this thing a little bit sideways, get some cool drifts out of it. On the highway, this is actually a very nice cruiser. Uh, I'm getting very impressive fuel economy this week. Uh, it's over 30 miles to the gallon on the highway. I will say though, one of my only complaints is that the tires in this are a little bit noisy. And I'm not sure if they're run flats. I don't think they are, but they kind of sound and feel like run flats. There's a lot of uh, transmission over bumps into the cabin, and they just they just don't feel happy on very smooth roads. You can kind of hear there's a little bit of noise on the highway here from them. If you guys are wearing headphones, like you should be with the binaural audio, 
you'll be able to hear there's just a, a faint turbo whistle with partial throttle. You can hear just the, the turbo spool up. It's very satisfying. It's very nice. The dual clutch transmission in this A35 adds a sharpness that is quite satisfying and engaging. And that's pretty typical with dual clutch transmissions. And there is a little bit of roughness off the line, but when you learn to drive it and learn to kind of treat it how it likes to be treated, it can be a pretty smooth driving experience. And overall, I will say that this transmission is better than some of the dual clutches that first came out in the A-Class uh, initially. They've done a good job tuning this, and uh, especially the AMG treatment in this particular car is quite good. Let's throw us into individual mode here. I like this mode. Everything's the most aggressive, except for the suspension, that's in comfort. <laughs> Little pop between shifts is very satisfying. This thing puts a smile on my face. It's a little puppy dog. You can feel there a little bit of torque vectoring going on. If you let off, there is some oversteer, a little bit of lift off oversteer, which is nice. I like that. It's chuckable. <laughs> the brakes on this are quite good too. As you would expect from AMG, this is just a nice overall car. They've done a really good job tuning this and, uh, you know, it takes that hot hatch feel and just brings it up a notch and adds a bunch of luxury and uh, poshness to it. Let's do one more launch control. I don't know if it'll do it with the wheels turned. Not quite, but... It'll give us a spirited start. <laughs> this is one of those cars that I did like from the very beginning. And that's always kind of scary to me because usually cars I like from the get-go I tend to like less after spending a couple hundred miles in them. But I will say, the more I drive this, the more I do enjoy it. It has some impressive driving characteristics. The handling is great. It's satisfying to drive. Um, it makes all the right noises. It does all the right things. It looks really good doing it. And uh, I think AMG has kind of nailed their formula with this car for the market that it is intended for. As a young buyer, as maybe a, a new person that would want to buy into the brand, uh, this would be a pretty compelling option. And if I had a little bit of extra money to spend, a pretty compelling alternative to a Golf R or an Audi S3, which is, uh, I haven't driven in a while, but as far as I can recollect, this is just a little bit more fun and exciting. And uh, as is typical with a lot of other AMG products, they like to have a little bit more fun and uh, this is where you'll get it. I wanted to get a night drive in on this car and show you guys the ambient lighting, what this thing looks like with all the gauges illuminated and the screens illuminated. It's all pretty cool. We also have some neat performance pages here in the AMG menu. You can check out the vehicle dynamics, what's going on with the all the drive system, power distribution, all that stuff. You have a horsepower torque display here, which is always fun course you can check out your consumption I am a little bit frustrated with this touchpad it's not amazing and of course you can customize your individual mode configure that at least you can use this as a touchscreen it is a little bit far away you can even see the individual tire pressure and temperature at each corner how cool is that See what happens when we go around a corner with this display. That's pretty cool. Oh, we've got all the gravel. No! We'll 
just turn off here and wrap up this video. If you guys are looking for any more videos on this AMG A35, head on over to the Winding Road YouTube channel. We'll be doing a day drive, night drive on this as usual. And thanks again to our sponsor for this video, Vincero Watches. We appreciate their support and uh, I am enjoying this watch. Click the link in the description if you want to take advantage of the 30% off sale this week. After that, use the code the TOFER or my link uh, to get 15% off your order. And uh, that's after August 17th, 2020. We're gonna go straight into the sound test after I do a little walk around of the lights and stuff in this parking lot. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. Thank you.